Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today starts a series with about three different goals in mind. The first is um, the main focus, which is looking at these um, gray jelly rolls from Jelly Roll. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with them, and I've been using them in this small little sketchbook that I picked up, and they're just absolutely fantastic. So. Uh, we're going to really focus on these. The second part is to kind of start experimenting on different paper. I have the toned tan, the blue, gray, uh, just kind of mixed media which just seems an off-white, and I have a pad of black somewhere. So we're going to play around with those. And then in future videos, play around with the Conte and charcoal, etc. on those different colored papers. Then lastly is to start focusing on taking small sketches, um, kind of cropping them to fit within these small mats that I have, and posting them on my Etsy for you know, really cheap. If people want to support the channel and own an original piece of artwork, I'll have that linked down below. So those are the three goals, to explore the pens, the paper, and then making you know presentable art from that. Now, looking at these pens, and we're using, this is just, I think, store brand drawing paper. And of course, I'm gonna wind up mixing them up. The markers themselves, the pens themselves, come in five different colors in the pack, and I think they are about probably six or seven dollars. In Michael's they were nine, but they were buy a pack of something, get it half off. And I just really was drawn to them. I really wanted to try them, so I got them at Michael's. Looking online, I had to look at the SKU numbers right down in here and match them up at the chart. If I look at jetpens.com, they have the pack there for $6.50. They list out the colors, but they don't say the SKUs, but they should be in this order. Our blue-gray, so we're gonna see what that looks like on the paper. We have our <laughs> Unfortunately, the caps are not the best color coded with it. The blue-gray helps, but this one, cool gray, it's a little off for me. Then we have our green gray, which is this guy right here. Then have our light warm. And then we have our so light warm gray, and then this is our light, our warm gray. So I'll line those up and we'll see how they look in comparison to it. Then I have a black jelly roll. I have the white uniball, which I find is working better than the white jelly roll. And I have a few of the black microns that we can use on top of our sketch. Anything else that we need to cover? I feel like I should actually read a little bit about these out to you just to um, kind of say why I think they're good for art. So the Moonlight Pen, so that's the series that these are from. Opaque ink that shows equally well on white and black paper, so it's great for the paper exploration, as well as matte and glossy paper. Uh, create beautiful artwork, decorate your journal. Uh, ink is non-toxic, resists feathering, bleed through on most papers. The ink is also archival, waterproof, and fade resistant, except the fluorescent colors, which fade if exposed to sunlight. So these are not the fluorescent. So whenever a brand kind of says that something is light fast, I, or sorry, uh, fade resistant, I kind of take their word on it, uh, but there are people out there that do the tests and they do have um, charts of them. So that's something that you can look into if you so choose. All right, I think that's all the 
background introduction we need. Um, so let's see, so here is, and what I'll do is, I'll set this mat here, and we'll focus on putting our work of art in that area which lets us use this extra area to compare the colors. So this is our blue-gray. And for me, hopefully it shows up on the camera. Uh, when I first drew them out, I didn't really see too much of a difference. And then it kind of hit me how different that they were, that this was on the bluer side, and this is on a tanner side, even though it's um, a cool gray. green-gray is pretty dark and being green I've been kind of thinking of that as something that would recede next we have the light warm we also have Percy climbing onto my leg and we have the warm gray so for me I've been using the blue-gray to kind of sketch things out the warm gray for, um, sorry, I'm gonna try not to uh, mix them up. The blue gray to sketch things out. The cool gray to warm up some areas, even though it's considered a cool. The green gray for darks that I want to recede. The warm gray for darks that I want to come forward. And light warm for um, a little bit more pop, things that are coming closer. Here's a little bit more um, detail, just going through these. These are in a sketchbook that I picked up, uh, a four by four, and you can see the variations there. And I think, unfortunately my sketches themselves have a mixture of other pens on top, but you can see some of the variation that we get within it, and that's the main focus. Um, just playing with that on the different t uh, toned papers. And I have a Fantan Latour pulled up right alongside me, and I'm gonna jump into that. Now, with sketching, and having a cat that just keeps on wanting lovies, right Percy Poe, you just want all the lovies? You can use one hand to sketch, and the other hand to uh, keep your cat from jumping and clawing at your leg for attention. So that's what I'm doing right now. But while I'm doing that, I am mapping out the, um, the flowers themselves, kind of the location of everything. It's the way that I have grown to kind of draw things in relation to each other. There's a lot of different techniques that you can use. There's drawing the grids on the paper, drawing the grids over the object that you're looking at, or the photo that you're looking at, and working from there. There's also using plumb lines, using your pen, and creating those angles. But the sketching, it's fun. It's loose. Really, um, I enjoy it. I enjoy the results from these guys. And I think sketching is a good way to go back to, um, I guess, the roots and just back to the uh, necessities, the basics. Okay, so Percy figured out that she could climb on my other side, my left hand. And I can't sketch right-handed. I'm not ambidextrous. Okay. So, my initial impression
has been, and I've been just using these on um, the sketchbook paper itself, which is on the wider side, as you probably saw, is to use the blue. Percy, you cannot climb up on me, I'm filming. As my background cool tone. I expect that to change as we go through our different papers. So I'm using it to map out and to uh, set the tone. I know that's a pun, but we're using that to map out the cooler areas as well. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but I started the, the film two or three times, so sometimes things get left out if, you, if I have to restart something. Um, here, I'm focusing on flowers, but if there's other things you would like to see in these videos, landscape, portrait, um, maybe other type of still life, let me know. Uh, fantasy stuff, imaginary, geometric. Just let me know. Okay, so that's the cool gray, the blue gray, sorry, blue gray. Now, they call this one cool gray, but for me, it's warmer than the blue one. And it, um, for me, pushes a little bit forward. I'm usually painting monochromatic. If you follow this channel, you know at this point that I, I paint monochromatic. And I'll do anything from just a burnt umber study to, um, burnt umber, raw umber, and um, and lately it has been earth tones with lamp black. I might have to just get Percy up on the table. All right, so we have Percy up on the table. You got the attention you wanted, Percy Pooh? So, working in the monochromatic and working in the values of one color I'll not really explore warmth, but once I start looking at burnt umber and raw umber, it started introducing the concept of warmth, since the raw umber is cooler than our um, burnt umber, which is on the redder side of things and just on the warmer side. And that play back and forth is very interesting and gives really cool results. And I think that's what really excited me about these pens is whenever I started realizing that that's what I can use them to uh, really learn and really practice that back and forth now, I'm going to skip down the line to the light warm, and that alone should probably show how this is warmer and um, jumps closer to us. Now where I falter is knowing when to go for the warm and when to go for the cool. 
in value, this is obviously darker. And I can use that for my darker shades. And maybe if I had taken this photo, uh, well, this painting that I'm looking at from Fantin Latour, and put it in um, just an editor to make it grayscale, that might have helped. So that's a personal thing that I plan on learning more of during this journey. I also start to realize, and I'm going to try and superimpose the uh, the image that I'm working from here. Sometimes I have trouble finding the same um, image at a later point when I'm putting the video together, but it should be there. I also start to realize that this flower being super white is one of our lightest values here, as, long as, as well as these other values. They're all very light, and that background starts to darken. So I am going to look at my cool gray. This is the green. Start using that. darken my background but to get those flowers to pop it was kind of a negative painting approach another thing that this had me thinking but the studies of the Fantan Latour that in this one particular, I could see the horizontal and vertical texture of the, um, the background. And I think it's simply just the texture of the surface that he was um, painting on. But seeing that texture, for me, you're going to scratch on everything, aren't you, Percy? This whole video is just all about Percy. Usually it's Hammy, guys. <laughs> and to me, and I think I had reflected on this in a previous Fantan Latour painting video. that letting the texture of the surface come through also lets us imagine that background wall um, surface or the table surface. Hopefully you can also see that I'm having no difficulty with one color on top of the other. And these jelly rolls work great. Now, I was staying within the horse, the vertical sketching motion for that background. I did start cross hatching back here using horizontal for my table. I think now would be a good time for us to see the warm gray. Should I put it on the darker side of things? And I've been using this for uh, leaves. I'm also going to use it for this dark red flower. They're all roses in this one.
then eventually we get to a point where we're then restricted in the tonal range of this um, palette of pens. And it's also where you start developing personally how you want to sketch and interpret these shapes and textures. For me, these very close masses are the way that I've been representing the leaves. I find that the um, texture really isn't seen too much in the shadows, which is kind of one of those going back to basics idea. And that was reiterated to me recently by um, Mad Charcoal. Mad Charcoal is a YouTuber, Instagram, um, does a lot of portrait work with charcoal that's very fantastic. Highly recommend checking them out. Um, and one of the things that um, it said was that they avoid a lot of detail in the shadows. It's just inherently not going to be there. Now, since this is a exploration of, I'm looking just to make sure I have them in order still, how they lay on top of each other. Here's going back to that green. The green I feel is the darkest. And it can give us a little bit more pop and you can see how that lays very well on top of the previous marks. Just by darkening the tone of the background, I can bring those shapes forward to life. I push this area too close compositionally, ran out of room. Let's see, let's go back to the blue-gray. This does not really want to take into areas that we already had passed. But if I wanted to soften details, I can pass over those pre existing marks. Could also build up 
the tonality of the background. Also, I think at this point with my sketching with these was when I had ordered a second set, realizing that I was going to use these a lot and really go through them. Now to remark on the paper, this was the, um, the basic drawing paper pad, which on the lighter side of things is going to cause uh, the fact that we're going to have to just lay our colors down. We're not going to lay our tones down. We're not going to be able to go in the, the light direction. We're just going to be able to go into the dark direction, which then is where we can add in the white jelly roll and the uniball if we want to move back into the lighter direction. I'm going to pass a line through these so you can see that it does kind of set it back a little bit. And if I go over these, it doesn't take too well on top. The uniball, on the other hand, really lays down a lot of, um, of ink or gel, whatever it is. We can use that to start um, going in that lighter direction, almost as if it's white out. I wonder if that's what the uniball is essentially. Now, the darks, I have the black jelly roll and I have the microns and the micron I find gives kind of a glare on top of these. I don't think we'd be able to see it in the video, and this is the thinner micron. And you can see how I can use it to darken in that aspect. Or I can take the black jelly roll and darken in that regard. I'm not sure why the set didn't come with black. I genuinely don't expect any video that I make like this to ever make its way to um, the ears of any of the Sakura um, Jelly Roll people. But um, if it did have the black in it, I think that would be a lot of fun and very helpful. I think Percy knows that it's the end of Mardi Gras break and that I have to go back to work tomorrow. And I think that's why she's being so chaotic. She woke up and chose chaos. Because me, her, and Hammy, we all took a nap. It's fun um, sketching from a master painting. It's fun painting from a master painting. All of these things will help you learn and grow and to um, just forces you to study the works of the master more. You can see how I omitted quite a few of the flowers in this one. And 
yeah, we'll start wrapping this one up and we'll see what it looks like underneath a mat. I took down the box of mats that I have for these smaller ones. And um, she's on top of that box right now. So that's what she is choosing to do. I like the microns a lot. I've been using the uh, repeatographs lately though as my technical liners. Uh, one thing that I don't like is how the le letter, the number that sits on top, gets rubbed off on all the number ones, especially the, the black number ones. I'm going to sign this and just kind of show you what it looks like under the mat. If we did the black that there. In fact, don't want to switch to the black. We'll stay with that for right now. Where does the black work? Does the black help it pop? Kind of brings it inside. I'm going to sign it uh, Andrew Broussard after Fantan Latour and I'm going to uh, put these up on Etsy. I'll have them linked down below. And um, I haven't priced them out yet, but it's going to include shipping and it'll be cheap and it'll be a buy two and get a third one free and I'll just throw a random one in uh, for y'all. So uh, check that out and um, you, you shout out to everybody that supports this channel. It really helps me out allows me to explore more art material and supplies and I can't spell my own name if I'm talking at the same time for some reason so let me just sign this after Fantan And there you go. Let's um, bring that blue background up. Actually, this is a great opportunity to try these markers, these jelly rolls, over writing. Let's see how that affects things. Um, considering that that background is seeming like a little bit of an afterthought at the top, I just want to fix that up here. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed, and I'm not sure what color paper I'm going to use next, but um, I'm hoping that you enjoy this series, and once again, let me know what you would like to see composition wise and if there's any other type of materials you would like explored within these if you can bring that leaf down there you go y'all take care and have a great day